Good morning, everybody. Pastor Nate Borman here, one of the pastors at Mount Lebanon Lutheran Church, here for a devotional thought for you Friday. Uh, we are walking our way through the Bible, uh, one chapter at a time, and we're right now we're in the book of Leviticus, which is a really, I mean, to be cl to be really clear, I keep saying this, and I'll pro and I'll probably keep saying it until we finish Leviticus. Leviticus is a really tough book. It's really tough because uh, we're a different culture, different time. Um, different i mean when you compare just the the world i mean i think people in in the southern hemisphere like africa asia uh brazil south america uh, i think they have a bet they would maybe have a better grasp of like what is this like what is this this life that god calls his people to live like and why does it make sense um so for us in, in north america um i think it, it's a lot more it's a lot more difficult for us to wrap our minds around it um but, I, but I'm hoping and I'm praying because God left this, this scripture. This is one of my, the lessons I hope you learn is that God left this scripture here for us. Um, he left this scripture here for us, for our time. Um, uh, not that we have to take, we, we, we take it seriously. We take it for our hearts. Um, there are some things that don't apply to us exactly. Um, because And the rest of the scriptures make that clear. We don't just dismiss things because we don't like them. Uh, we, we say those those things, there are some things, like the, the, the rules about how they were supposed to operate as a society, for example, or the way, the rules that they were supposed to use to operate there in worship. Um, we understand that those things don't apply to us anymore because the, because the scriptures make it clear. So, But, but that does not mean that what God t says to us there don't, doesn't apply and there's not something for us to learn from it. So I guess one of the lessons I want you to learn is, is, is what Paul said to the Romans, everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance and through the encouragement that the scriptures give, we might have hope. Um, and so what I want to ask you to do, that's Romans 15, 4. Uh, what I want to ask you to do this morning is think about, uh, we're, we're in Leviticus 13, 14, 15, 16 in that range. Um, and I'm going to just give you something to think about as you read it. And I want to ask you this question. What does this section do to you? Um, and I ask that question for this reason. In this section, um, in, a, in a large part, what you're going to run into is that God's people they when when something was wrong so for instance uh in 13 and 14 leviticus 13 and 14 it talks about skin diseases um so like rashes and 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 boils and uh, leprosy those kinds of things what what god said to his people is when there's some sort of skin disease or when there's some sort of mold in your house um th that person who has the disease is separated and isolated and, and, and until that person was clean, those are the words that God uses, until that person was clean, until the disease was, the skin disease was cured, or the skin, skin disease was determined that it would be non, it wasn't infective, wasn't going to affect anybody else, right? Then they were, un, they, they were unclean until that. So, so the person who was unclean, they couldn't, they had to live in a different part of the city. Um, they were quarantined, um, kind of like we've quarantined certain people um, these days because of COVID-19, right? Although this quarantine that God gave to his people is much more severe. Like you, you were supposed to walk on the other side of the street. It was more than six feet. It was, you, 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 you were totally isolated and separated from God's people. Um, you're totally isolated. Remember, you see this in Jesus' ministry. Remember the 10 lepers. They were across the street and they were crying out to Jesus, Jesus have mercy on us. They go on the other side of the street and it was, it was actually very daring for them to even call out to Jesus for his help. So you start to think about what does that do to you if you're, if you're a leper? Uh, what does that do to you if you have a skin disease and you're told by the priest you can't, you can't come? And what does that do to you? And, and, and then he also talks, the, the, God also speaks about in other places in Leviticus about, you know, if there's a, a, a defect, um, if there's something wrong with you, if you're sick, um, if you're missing a limb or those kind of things, there, it's, there's, a, there's a sermon that like the, these people were, were um, in a way uh, isolated. And so I'm asking the question, what does that do to you when, you when you realize that this is what God's told his people to do when there was a deformity or a defect or a disease? What does that do to you? See, I, I think about what that did to the people who, to whom it happened. Like if you're, if you're the leper and you're, you're isolated from the rest of society, I think about the shame that you must feel. I think about the isolation that you must feel. Um, 
And maybe you feel that too, like if you're going through something physical and you have a defor there's a deformity or a, or a, what what's what medic medicine would call a defect, um, a disability, or if there's a disease, do you ever get this this like where you get this feeling where people look at you like ooh goodies, um, where they they're a little bit squeamish. I I, I feel that sometimes too around with the, in these COVID nineteen days. Like if you cough a little bit, people are like ooh. And why is that? I, I think there's something there's something uh, powerful and important for us to learn from that. What, what what's going on right there? And I, and I think that there's a, the truth that I'm gleaning from this for myself, and I hope you can see this too. Is that when there's something wrong, like a skin disease or a defect or a sickness, what's coming to the surface in our bodies and in our lives is sin, right? Because if we're sick, that's because of sin. If we're defective, if there's something wrong, like if I'm missing a limb, there's something wrong because of sin, right? And, and so there's this, there's a problem, right? We see this again and again throughout scriptures. And what does God say to his people about sin and, and, and that, those kinds of things? He said, where there is sin, there, there can't be re relationship, right? So, so when there's visible manifestations of sin, like sin's effects, like in our body, right? This is where God says, you're, you're on your own. But I want you to notice something. There's something really powerful that God does so that those who are isolated don't stay isolated. That those who are separated don't stay separated. That those who are unclean don't remain unclean. This is the powerful thing that God does, and it's this. He says, there's a pronouncement, a declaration that God makes. He, the, read through Exodus and Leviticus 13 and 14, and you'll see God makes a declaration and that, that declaration, more than the cleansing itself, that declaration is, that, is what restores the leper back into God's family. So I hope you see that. See, what I want you to see today is that we don't, we're, we're, we don't need to worry about it. And I, and I would say to you, if, somebody, if you run into somebody who has something that's not quite normal, we would, some people would call it a defect or a deformity or there's a, some sort of disease. Uh, Jesus has embraced all of us just as we are and so let's do the same for other people and the second thing I want you to I want you to learn is this that God declares all of us clean that's the, that's his declaration we call it justification in, in the Bible the term justification is a courtroom term that says God has declared you not guilty God has declared you clean and and you still may look clean right that you still may have a wreck you still may look unclean you still may have a record in the world that says you're guilty of something uh, you still may have the the you know this a missing limb or a, a, what people would call a defect but God has declared you clean God has declared you worthy God has declared you whole and see he has restored you to himself See, what God, which again, this is a theme that I'm, I see running throughout Leviticus, is that God always provides a way for the exile to come home. God always provides a way for the isolated to be restored. God always provides a way for the, for the uh, uh, separated to be unseparated, to be brought back home, right? God, and it's God's declaration and it's God's cleansing that brings each one of us home. So if you're feeling, if you're feeling this, if you're feeling isolated, if you're feeling separated, if you're feeling like the outcast, um, know this, that God has declared you not the outcast. God has declared you not the stranger. God has declared you family. God has declared you clean. God has declared you his. So live today in that. You're, you're not on the outside looking in. You're on the inside. You're part of God's family, washed by the blood of Jesus, claimed by the King. You're inside. You're with God now. So have a great day, everybody. The Lord be with you all and grant you his peace.